Welcome to Design to Move, a weekly functional movement series reviewing common movement impairment syndromes, muscle imbalances, and injury cycles, and how to correct for them. Don't just exercise, but restore optimal movement. Welcome back, guys. My name is Ryan Maxwell. This is Don Brandes. Today, we're going to take you through another movement distortion called knee valgus. This is one of the three major movement distortion patterns that you're gonna see in the body. It has to do with overactive muscles in the calves that restrict the mobility of the ankle and then the associated issues up into the knees and hips. We're gonna give you a whole slew of exercises and reducing strategies to help the body get back to its functional ranges of motion. If you have questions on any of the stuff we're going over today, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. We've also written a blog in the series. It's gonna be in the description below, so make sure to click on the description down there. And we do have a table of contents to the side here with timestamps of all of our various segments with a condensed version at the very bottom. Let's get into it. This is our mobility release segment of our video. We're going to be targeting the peroneals. These are our plantar flexors of the foot and everters of the foot. And we're also going to be targeting the groin muscles. You're going to need a lacrosse ball for the peroneals and one of our five inch foam balls, a fluid ball. Uh, you can get one online if you want to purchase one. Let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do is create some mobilization in the joint around the ankle. There's two joints, major joints, that we wanna look at. The subtalar joint, where your calcaneus, or your heel bone, meets up with this little sliding bone between the tibia and fibula. And then again, the sliding filament there, the talus, in between the mortise of the fibula and the tibia, the lower uh, bones of the lower extremity. So what we'll do is just bring the leg up and across, and Don's gonna isolate his left side. He's actually holding what are called the malleoli. These are the basically the tuberosity ends of the bone. And he's gonna hold it there. And then he's just gonna rotate his foot around clockwise. And you might hear some creaking and cracking as you break open some scar tissue in that joint. And then you'll go back counterclockwise after about 20 rotations. So what we're looking for is just to loosen up the joint, get some room for that talus to glide around a bit, and then we're gonna to start to reduce the peroneal muscles, which are these muscles that lay alongside of the fibula, the outer leg bone, that help to push the toe down and rotate the foot out. Part of the issue with uh, adducted or rotated in femurs is that the foot is basically unstable because it's not strong enough. It flips out or kicks out, it's called pronation. The metatarsals of the bone of the foot will fall inward and so the ankle and the lower bone of the tibia will rotate in with that quick pressure on the MCL and the meniscus on the opposite side. So we wanna reduce the muscles that are associated with that. In this case, it's gonna be the peroneals. So we're gonna do that with this little crossbow. So identify the peroneals, what we're gonna do is first look at this little bony marker. This is again, the lateral malleola of the fibula. And if you go just behind it and trace the bone, run your finger back and forth, you're gonna find that peroneal muscle. Again, if you're wondering how to define it, you could flex the foot down, push it down, and then rotate it out. And then you can start to feel that muscle bulge, and that's a good indicator, again, you're on the right spot. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna offset your leg diagonally and then place the ball right above the, again, the fibula, and then roll it up until you feel a tender spot right on the lateral portion of the calf. Okay, so it's not quite to your gastrocnemius muscles, which are these bigger muscles on the upper portion of the leg, the lower portion of the leg, but we're gonna be right above it. So Don, do you feel that? I do. Yep. So if you need additional pressure, what you can do is take your other leg and cross it over that leg. And what we'll do is isolate it there. And what I'm gonna have you do is breathe in and extend through your back, let the toe fall, and then breathe out, collapse the abs, flex through the spine, pull the toe up, and then rotate it in gently. And when you do that, you'll feel that muscle floss between the pressure of the ball and the fibula. So as you breathe in, you're gonna extend, let the foot fall, put more weight into the muscle, push down, breathe out, and pull the foot up and in. This is an active release technique that's actually gonna do a pen and stretch or flossing of that peroneal complex. There's a brevis and longus muscle, and both again are responsible for pushing the toe down and out. So by reducing their tone and increasing their length, it'll help to restore the functional mechanics of the foot and the ankle. So we can start to increase the muscle relationships that are important. In this case, it's gonna be the front shin muscles and the muscles in the middle of the arch of the foot called the abductor hallucis, both of which we're gonna target in the next segment of coming here under activation. 
okay? So what you'd wanna do is go through this about, again, six to 10 times with the breathing out and breathing in, pull the ankle up and across. And as you do that, you'll notice every subsequent repetition, you could go a little bit lower, and again, you'll get a little bit deeper into that muscle bed. Once you're done, we're gonna stretch it. So you'll take your leg off of the ball, and he's gonna cross his leg over so his knee is bent. And he's actually gonna push his toe down first. So he's gonna plant to flex the toe, and then he's gonna pull it in, and then draw it up into, again, flexion. So he's gonna start with plant flexion, invert the ankle, and then rotate it up. Now at the same time, he's gonna grab his foot, pull it up towards him. And Don, do you feel that stretch along the back there in the fibula? I do. Yep. So what you can do to help leverage that is to flex your glute at the same time. He's gonna be on his left side, so he's gonna flex his left glute. Feel how that increases the stretch, okay? We're actually using the IT band to pull laterally to create cross tension. And then he's gonna breathe in, pull it up, breathe out, and relax it. Breathe in, pull it up, up and in, and then relax it. And again, through multiple iterations, maybe six to 10 times, you'll notice that it gets a little bit softer each time. You'll be able to get more and more length, more inversion out of that ankle. Now again, it's across into the midline, that's called inversion, and then pull it up into plant deflection or rather dorsiflexion. So again, pull it into inversion and then up into dorsiflexion. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so once you're done with that, do the other side, and then we're gonna get into our next stretch, which again is gonna be of the adductor muscles. Now before we do that, I just wanna make sure that we are all on the same page. When the foot starts to drop inward, the ankle will roll in with it, and the lower leg will roll inward. Now that's gonna pull the femur in with it and start to compress these muscles in the middle of the leg called the adductors. These are again the groin muscles, adductor brevis, longus pecuneus, these are muscles that pull the pelvis down and help to pull that pelvis lordotically or inferiorly, creating compression into the lower back. Now again, that's gonna restrict or inhibit our glutes and it's gonna make our calves overactive at the same time. So we're gonna to wanna to reduce those muscles. We're gonna use this ball. So what we wanna do is position ourselves so that the muscles would stretch. Now the stretching of the muscles is the exact opposite of what their action. So these muscles help to flex and adduct the leg in. So if I wanted to stretch them or pen and stretch them, I would extend the leg, externally rotate the femur. And that's gonna stretch them from their insertion at the femur to the pubic symphysis where they attach at the pelvis. So to do that, he's gonna lay down on his stomach. So he's still showing you his left leg. And he's gonna put the ball midway up his femur towards his groin, more towards the medial side. So do you feel that, Don? Mm -hmm. Pretty easy to identify. Once you're there, we're gonna start to put pressure down into that ball by breathing out and flexing your tailbone under. So when you do that, you'll feel the pressure increase, right? You're basically pulling the pelvis under posteriorly, which is gonna stretch through that muscle and then relax it, breathe in and sink, and then let the body fall into the ball. And you feel that increase the pressure there, right? So it's different ways to, again, pull the muscle through the belly or pull that muscle through the pressure of the ball and using your breath and your abdominals to help reinforce that. So again, he's gonna breathe out, flex down using his abdominals onto the pressure of the ball and then breathe in, relax and flex his butt. See how that works? Okay, so as he flexes his glute, it's gonna rotate his femur externally and it's actually going to create more stretch through that belly of the muscle. So we're breathing in as we flex our glute and externally rotate our femur and then we're gonna breathe out, flex our abs and push down into the belly. Again, another pen and stretch technique to help to reduce the overuse of these groin muscles. So again, six to 10 times, you're gonna do that and then we're gonna get into the stretch. So Don's basically on the table here, you would be doing this on the floor. And what we're gonna do is first protect the knee. It's very important that we do this. He's gonna make sure that his knee stays locked by flexing his quad, and that's gonna help to stabilize his knee. We're gonna be in a vulnerable position here, so be careful. Now what I wanna do is, again, use what's called a PNF stretch or a push-pull release. It's gonna help to use the nervous system to relax the tension in the muscle. So he's gonna push the leg physically down into the table as he breathes out. 
Breathing out, we'll pull the tailbone under, give him a nice strong anchor point to flex the muscle from. He's gonna hold that pressure of flexing into the table for three to six seconds, and he's gonna relax it, breathe in, and sink and see if he can extend his leg out further laterally. What we wanna do is make sure that we are, again, looking for an increased abduction of the hip as we breathe in. So he's gonna breathe out, flex the leg down, push it down into the table or the floor, and then breathe in, relax it, and see if he can get more abduction. Now you'll notice that he gets a little bit of distance each time. And Dom, this isn't painful, right? No. No, it's pressure. There should never be pain here in the stretch. We wanna make sure that we protect the muscle by not pushing it too far, because then that actually creates microtraumas in the tissues and might actually reduce the efficacy of what we're trying to do. Okay, so before we get out, here's a quick way to get out of it. Very straight in your knee, keep it straight. And then you're gonna kick the leg back around using your glute. We wanna make sure that we protect the knee when we get out of that stretch. A lot of times you'll see it buckle by shifting weight to it. We wanna make sure that we don't, again, damage our joints as we try to get out of our stretch. Okay. That brings us to the end of our mobility and release. Let's go to the next section. This is our activation segment of the video where we're gonna target the dorsiflexors and inverters of the ankle. These are the muscles that pull the foot up and in help to create more stability of the foot and mobility in the ankle. After reducing the tension in these plantar flexor muscles, the muscles that push your foot down or your toe box into the ground, also fever to roll the foot out. If you see this in your posture, this is again the video for you. You're gonna to wanna to activate the muscles that do the exact opposite of that action. These are gonna be the anterior posterior tibialis muscles. Okay, they're the muscles in the front of your shin, a lot of times you'll feel pain in the shin because your fascia is trying to work harder than these muscles and they tear, but the that fascia will tear, that's why people get shin splints. So if you're experiencing that, again, this is a good one for you. So what I'm gonna have Don do, and what I would have you do, is use an exercise band. I'm using a fairly light exercise band today, but you could do something a little bit heavier. Your calf muscles are pretty strong, your plantar flexors, we wanna go and compete against them. So at some point you're gonna want a stronger band than what we're demonstrating today but for today's purposes is what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna have Don do is wrap the band around his toe box on the roof of his foot, and he's gonna pull his toes up towards his shin. Before he moves through the ankle, other than the dorsiflexion, he's gonna flex his quad to lock his femur, flex his glute to lock the femur at the proximal attachment, and then he's gonna rotate his foot in only from the ankle, that's pretty important. If we're rotating from the femur, you're gonna see your kneecap rotate in. So Don, show him what it looks like not to do. So he'll roll in from the whole femur and the whole hip will rotate it with it, depending upon how tight your hamstrings and glutes are. Don's got really tight hamstrings and glutes. Okay, so either way, what you're gonna do is pull the toe up, flex the quad, flex the butt, rotate the foot in, and then come down cleanly, rotate back to neutral, and let the foot come back into plant to flex. So he's gonna breathe in, Pull the toe up, flex the quad, flex the butt, rotate the foot in, keep the femur stable, and then let the leg come down. So notice that the band is just about four to six inches from the ground, about the height of his foot, and it would be anchored somewhere, either to a couch, or maybe a door. There's all sorts of places you could anchor, but again, exercise band, and you're gonna shoot for about 20 repetitions, nice, slow, controlled movements. You're gonna do two sets, you're gonna to wanna to give yourself about a minute of time in between each set. And will you start to feel it? It's right in front of your shin. You feel that here, Don? Mm -hmm. Yep. And again, you're gonna to try to stabilize your hip by breathing in, arching through the back, making sure your pelvis and lower back stay stable the whole time. So make sure to go through this, and when you're done, we're gonna in, get into our integration. Second to last segment is on integration. We're gonna teach you how to move multiple joint segments in the ranges of motion that are appropriate for you and coordinate their alignment and muscle recruitment. This is gonna be targeting, again, the ankle, knee, and hip. Let's get started. We got Don set up into a single leg balance stance, but I've got a band that's basically gonna pull his ankle in medially. What I've done is wrap this band under his lateral malleolus of the fibula, and that's basically pulling the ankle and the talus into plant or into pronation. So what we'll see with people is they lose their arch and their foot will rotate outward and the foot will flatten. And that's how your body will actually create compensation for lack of mobility in your talus 
so that you can't get your knee to glide forward. And that creates all sorts of improper mechanisms up into the hip as your body doesn't have the ability to stabilize its pelvis or lumbar pelvic hip system. So what we're gonna try to do today is increase the strength of the muscles that support the transverse arch, the medial arch. And he's gonna do that by pulling his big toe back towards his heel. And as he does that, he's gonna notice that the ankle bone rotates outward and it gives them a nice, strong, stable base of support. We want to learn how to move through the ankle without the accessory motion from the metatarsal spread. Okay, now that's an important thing. So he's going to hold his ankle there. He's going to dome his foot, keep the foot in dome by keeping the toe back. He's going to extend his knee to straight, and then he's going to sift his weight back into his heel, lift his upper or other leg up into flexion, and extend his arm out in front of him on the opposite hemisphere. Now he's gonna breathe in and gently let the other leg come back down to the ground and bring his arm back down. Now the whole time he's gonna keep his foot in that dome position and this is gonna help to keep that leg as a nice straight pillar with his knee fully extended to stretch through his hamstring and his calf while maintaining the stability of his foot. So go ahead and start. Breathe out and breathe in. Breathe out, and breathe in. And again, he would continue to do this for 20 repetitions, all the while making sure that his ankle doesn't rotate in. We don't want the foot to abduct out or pronate, meaning the foot's not gonna start to rotate out. So Don is showing what it looks like not to do. You'll start seeing the foot dump in, and his toe rotate out. Okay, that's gonna create a whole lot of twisting up at the ankle and at the knee. A lot of times we end up with maltracking of the femur in the tibia, patella mal mal or patella femoral maltracking, so that the, the kneecap starts to move irregularly. And again, you could start to feel pain and pressure in the ACL and the MCL. So these are all things that we're gonna wanna help to stabilize by increasing the strength of the muscles of the transverse medial arch of the foot. So he would do 20 repetitions, give himself about 45 seconds to a minute to recover, and then do a second set. And again, as you get better, what you can do is start to add more motion by going into a lunge series. So instead of doing the single leg balance, he would step back with his right leg, let his knee glide forward over his toes, just to the point of his toes, without seeing excessive medial rotation of the tibia. So once again, we're avoiding that valgus of the knee by allowing the, the knee to travel forward, tibial ascension, without seeing excess pronation and flattening eversion of the foot. That's the big mechanism that we're trying to work through here. And he would try to keep that leg out of it altogether, making sure that the hip line was fairly neutral as he stepped back. So as you get better at this movement, you certainly can start to add those additional ranges of motion, all while making sure that we reduce the range of motion at the ankle so that we don't go further than about 13 to 15 degrees of knee valgus. And that's about it. Finished up with integration, let's move on. We're gonna finish off with our strength portion. We're gonna be doing a sideline hip extension with a slight abduction. We're gonna be targeting the gluteal complex and specifically the glute max. For our final exercise, Don's gonna be laying on his right side. We're still targeting the left side of the body since we've been demonstrating that since uh, the beginning here. So what you're gonna notice is that he's starting by getting himself into a neutral alignment. It just means his joints are stacked the way they should be anatomically. So the base of his head is in line with the middle of his back and his sacrum down at the lower portion of his spine. So everything is a straight line. Now what we're gonna do is target the gluteals and these are the muscles that pull the leg back and help to externally rotate the femur. So these are the muscles that actually are in opposition to the muscles that we reduced earlier. And it's gonna to help to stabilize the femur so that it doesn't dump inward, creating extra pressure into the knee and again, down into the ankle and foot. So he's gonna straighten that leg out. He's gonna pull his toe up towards his shin and he's gonna lift it just a little bit so that the femur is right in line with this little hip bone called a trochanter. Now, the goal for this exercise is he's gonna glide through that little notch in his socket of his hip called the acetabulum and bring the femur forward without moving the pelvis around. So we wanna see the leg actually create the movement in the socket, not move the actual shelf that it sits in. 
That means you gotta use your core for this, folks. So what we're gonna do is breathe in as he extends the leg forward, or flexes the leg forward from the hip, and then breathes out, flexing the abdominals and kicking the leg back, all the while making note not to excessively externally rotate, that would be indicated by the toe rotating up, or letting the pelvis rotate backward. That means you're probably using the opposite hip flexors and TFL on the opposite hip. So again, he's gonna breathe in, bring the leg forward, keep the arch of the lower back as you go into flexion through the hip, and then breathe out and bring the leg back, not letting the pelvis move by engaging the abdominals. So he can do this for several repetitions. We're gonna do it for about 20 times. It's nice and slow. And as he brings his leg forward, he'll feel a nice stretch in the hamstring. As he brings the leg back, he'll feel a stretch in the quads, TFL, IT band. And again, we're looking for a nice functional range of motion. We wanna see the leg come back almost 10 degrees past his hip line and try to bring his leg all the way up to about 90 degrees into hip flexion, all the while making sure that he doesn't move around in his lower back. So as you do this, it doesn't seem like a lot in the beginning, but it starts to let your glute up pretty quickly, right? You feeling that, Don? I am. Yeah. So a lot of times we substitute our external rotators like our piriformis rather than using our glute max that has to get overworked because it's trying to decelerate that internal rotation of the femur because of that knee valgum, because of the lack of stability of the foot. So all these things work together to help keep the leg nice and parallel under the hips. And remember, we don't want to see a lot of swaying in the hips or hiking or dropping in the hips as we run or walk. That plays havoc into our lower back and eventually into our spine, ribcage, and shoulders. So by getting these hip sockets nice and stable at their proximal or close attachments, by getting the glutes to fire, you're going to see a whole lot more stability through the whole body, including the knee and the ankle. There you go, Don. So again, you would do that for about 20 repetitions, do about a minute of recovery in between, and then again, hit another set. And this would bring us to the end of the strength segment. Just remember that we would wanna do both sides of the body. Most of the time, we're gonna see distortions on both sides to a lesser or greater degree, but this is something that's gonna to help to restore the functional motion and help to reduce some of the common injury cycles that are present in the average population. So thanks again. And again, that brings us to the end of strength. This was a tutorial on the reduction of knee valgus. This is a very common issue that we're going to see in a lot of populations. Make sure to spread the message, send this video out to family and friends. We have lots of associated disorders or issues that creep up because of this knee valgus. Shin splints, plantar fasciitis, patellofemoral maltracking, bursitis in the hip, again, lower back SI joint relationships. It's a pretty big issue. It's far reaching into other areas of the body. So make sure to again, follow this video tutorial, do it a few times a week and you'll notice in no time, your body's gonna start to feel a whole lot better and your functional ranges of motion will improve. Again, if you have questions on any of the information that we've gone over today, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And again, we do have the description of the blog or the blog in the description below. So make sure to take a look at that. As always, we say your body's designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you next week for another episode.